When thinking back on The Last of Us franchise, there are a lot of standout features. The complex and deep characters, the broken yet beautiful world, and the freshest take on the zombie genre I've seen in decades. Yet the longer I linger on the franchise, the more my mind keeps taking me back to the depths of Seattle, to Ground Zero, to the Rat King. In terms of level design, environmental storytelling, and boss fights, The Last of Us Part II's Ground Zero chapter is by far, for me, the highlight of the entire series. Regardless of how you feel about Part II as a whole, or Abby as a character, we can all agree that this chapter keeps you on the edge of your seat and showcases the true horror elements of this world that The Last of Us Part I merely touched on. So in today's video, we will be doing a deep dive into this chapter and do an in-depth analysis of the story this section tells. If you haven't figured it out already, spoilers ahead. Lake Hill Hospital was Washington's ground zero during the initial stages of the outbreak. Many patients were housed in the lower levels before more knew about the severity of the cordyceps. As a result, the bottom floors were sealed off after the medical staff and military personnel were attacked and overwhelmed by infected individuals. The hospital was placed into lockdown as FEDRA soldiers moved in to secure the area. Intent on clearing out the lower floors to secure Cordyceps research, FEDRA soldiers sent in wave after wave of men, each time coming back with less and less. Eventually, the hospital was outright abandoned and remained a tomb for nearly 20 years. During Seattle Day 2, Ellie and Abby would actually visit the hospital within hours, if not minutes, of each other. Abby and Lev were sent to the hospital in order to obtain medical supplies to treat Yara's arm. Lev remained out of sight as Abby strolled up to her WLF friends, but she was almost immediately taken into custody for going AWOL. However, she was later freed by her friend Nora. Nora, telling Abby that the WLF is clearing out the hospital in order to prepare for an assault on the Seraphites, tells Abby that the basement was the only place that might have supplies she needs. However, they haven't cleared it out yet because it's rough. Saying she'll be fine, Nora leads Abby to the entrance and wishing her luck, Abby enters the oncology center, beginning her descent into hell. The room is pitch black and strangely untouched by man or infection. The Lake Hill play zone sits unnervingly absent of children with toys tucked away. Moving to the atrium, Abby finds a barricaded room with three corpses of medical staff and a note. Jake, I don't think I'm going to make it home. I'd give anything to be with you and Susie right now. I'm hiding with a few of my colleagues. The door is barricaded and those things are on the other side. Things were way worse than we thought. I'm pretty sure no one is coming for us. At least, not in time to save us. I hope one day this note will get to you. I hope you and Susie will remember me. I love you both so much. Scott. Finding her way down to the intensive care unit, Abby is met with a locked door, forcing her to find a way into the trauma slash surgery department. Dropping down a level, Abby is met with her first grisly sight. In front of the entrance to the ER, skeletal bodies from FEDRA soldiers lay strewn about. To the right of the ER, we find another FEDRA corpse with a note. I'm the last of my squad. Everyone else that came down here with me is dead. We secured most of the doors, but some were out of reach due to the overwhelming force of the infected patients. We didn't anticipate this kind of resistance. I thought they were sick and weak. I didn't think I'd see them rip my men apart. I have several bites on my arm and leg. I'm going to take a few more of these fuckers out until I get to my last few bullets. Then I'll go join my squad. If you find this, know that you will need to send more soldiers to fully secure this area. Although, hopefully, you blew up this building to kingdom come and you weren't dumb enough to try and contain this thing. Good luck, assholes. This was clearly written during the early days of the infection. Not much was known then, and the utter chaos of the situation resulted in mass panic and stupid decisions. However, this Fedra soldier had some common sense in suggesting they blow up the hospital. Completely disregarding his warning and investigating further, we find more dead Fedra soldiers and a chapel tucked away in the back. On a podium, we find another note. Are they really going back in there today? Every time, only half the squad returns. We've lost the lab. It's time to call it. Also, sorry for passing notes like we're in high school. I just don't trust these soldiers listening in. I have no idea what's going on. Why don't they get us out of here? They keep saying evac is going to happen as soon as they make sure the building can be contained. I mean, are they seeing or hearing what's going on down there? We've lost it. I think it's not about containment. I think it's about protecting the data of the research. We need to get out of here. Our friends might still be alive down there. You've seen what those things do. No one could have survived it. Not for this long. It sucks, but they're dead. What are you suggesting? I see Scott fighting with the soldiers. He's more than fed up. 
We get him and look for a way out. Let's give it one more day, see what these new soldiers can do. One day, then we act. Thanks. From this note, we can assume that the skeleton of Scott and the two other skeletons found in the atrium are one and the same. So sadly, they didn't make it very far. But this shows more evidence of Fedra's mismanagement of this whole situation. Whatever data is down there, Fedra thought it was worth the lives of dozens of soldiers. What this information is, we don't know. But I assume some Fedra bigwig thought it could be used to potentially help with a cure. However, based on everything we've seen in this world, I highly doubt it would have worked. But they still attempted to collect it nonetheless. With nowhere to go but forward, Abby makes it into the ER. Donning her mask, she pushes through the first containment shroud to see her first signs of fungal growth. Upon the second, she finds a grisly sight of an individual strapped to a gurney completely overtaken by the cordyceps, with even more growth all around. Pushing past the third, it's strangely light on fungal growth, but littered with lab equipment. However, entering into one of the operating rooms, Abby sees what remains of a patient, tied down and locked away, with their last thoughts written down as they descend into madness. To whom it may concern, you cannot treat us like this. I understand that many people are sick, but getting shoved in here and separated from my wife is unacceptable. I've been sitting here for over three hours without an update. The doctor put some ointment on my bite mark and then vanished. This thing hurts and seems to be getting worse. Please deliver this note to your supervisor immediately. Sincerely, Don Carter. Woke up starving. Can't keep anything down. Not even water. My head is fucking pounding. The screaming outside doesn't help. Why did you lock me in here? Someone needs to come. I want to see Sasha. I want my wife. Sasha, help. Can't keep my thoughts. Barely write this. Can't sleep too hungry. Get me out. Hungry. Eyes hurt. Sasha. To my knowledge, this is the first note we've seen in The Last of Us that details firsthand how the infection truly affects someone. It breaks their mind, makes them go crazy, and really makes me wonder if a part of them remains after the infection takes hold. As we see in the early days, people who were infected spent their last moments of sanity locked away, alone, hearing nothing but the screams from the others as all they can do is wait until it's all over. Leaving this horrendous scene, Abby finds a set of doors leading to the trauma center with minor fungal growth underneath. Attempting to open the doors, Abby hears the low grumble of some thing. <laughs> Is that? Unable to open the door due to a lack of power, Abby moves to the surgical suites and finds more and more fungal growth. For the first time since she's arrived at the hospital, clickers can be heard screeching and clicking in the distance while stalkers cling to walls, waiting to pounce on any unsuspecting explorers. Stop doing that! This is actually really interesting because one would expect this place to be littered with infected. However, it's only a handful, which to me makes this place all the more terrifying. I remember playing this for the first time, expecting hordes of clickers to pounce on me at any second. However, due to the lack of infected all around, it really adds to the element that something is off. And, as we will later see, proves that most of the infected were simply shoved into the trauma center and left to rot. Eventually finding another note, it reads, Kayla Higashi, MD. Steven, I can't keep doing this. I know I'm just supposed to run the tests and log the data, but I can't handle this much pain. I escorted some soldiers to the trauma. I wasn't supposed to go in there. I've seen what the patients turn into. Every single adult and child that is brought in here with a bite or a scratch is going to lose their minds and we keep lying to them. I asked to go home and was told I need to keep going. Some bullshit about national security. They offered me an office to sleep in if I want to. Steven, you need to get me out of here. I'm going to have a mental breakdown. It appears that the nurses and doctors knew far before anyone else that the end was near. But again, Fedra, being Fedra, forced them to fight a losing war. It's no wonder why so many QZs are abandoned. Fedra was simply not equipped to handle this situation, and when forced to make a decision, nine times out of ten, they made the wrong one. Following cables to a generator, Abby restores power to the ER, releasing the trapped clickers. Quickly smoking them. <laughs> Abby searches the rooms and still can't find any medical supplies. 
With only the ambulances left to search, Abby moves to the garage. Passing the trauma center on her way out, Abby sees the doors wide open with thick fungal growth and biomass completely packing the walls, as well as a bloody mass laying in the center. Nearly everyone who was infected was simply shoved in there. When an infected dies, it sprouts into spores and fungal growth, so for the growth to be this thick, there had to be hundreds of infected locked in there. And, judging by the lack of Fedra corpses around, that's most likely where all that quote-unquote important data was stored. So I imagine the majority of the fungal growth is due to dead Fedra soldiers. And by the bloody mass left behind and the growl we heard earlier, some of them were still alive. And now, they're out. In its wake, a bloody trail leads and disappears into the garage. Eventually finding an ambulance with the necessary medical supplies, the worst possible thing happens. The thing returns. The Rat King is here. It's a super organism composed of multiple stalkers, clickers, and bloaters. The Rat King is made up of some of the first people infected by the Cordyceps in the city of Seattle, meaning it developed into this thing after 25 years of infection. Based on the room we found it incubating in, the spores and biomass of the area was so dense that it fused all these infection forms into this unholy thing of nightmares. Quickly pushing herself out of the ambulance, Abby runs deeper into the hospital as the Rat King follows close by, destroying everything in its path. Falling through the floor and into the flooded basement, Abby is left with no choice but to fight this monster. After whittling it down with shot after shot, the stalker half of the Rat King eventually tears itself off from the mass, forcing Abby to fight two halves of the same monster. Unloading everything she has, Abby eventually manages to kill this monstrosity. However, the stalker still lives and scurries further into the hospital. <laughs> Not much is left in the basement. Decades of Seattle rainfall has left it partially submerged with nothing truly of value or use here. As Abby attempts to find her way out of the ruined floor, the stalker returns and knocks her into the hospital morgue where Abby finally kills the last half of the Rat King and makes her way out of the hospital, ending the chapter. I love The Last of Us Part Two so much. To see Ground Zero 25 years later is unnerving to say the least. Learning about how Fedra was throwing soldier after soldier into the meat grinder for data that would most likely be pointless is heartbreaking. And reading through the last thoughts of the infected as the Cordyceps eats away at their sanity is even worse. And the Rat King is just the cherry on top. Ground Zero adds so much more to the lore of the world and is by far one of the best missions in the Last of Us franchise, just in terms of environmental storytelling, atmosphere, and creature design. Everything about Ground Zero was perfect, and I will always remember my first time descending into hell.